I was going to come up with a pun for this episode, but I didn't want to come off as a knucklehead. Bloop! I'm Vince. I'm Claire. And this is Friends Friends of Legend. Legend! Friends of Legend, a podcast where we alchemically transmute the mysterious into the familiar. We deal with happy, friendly magic. That's right. Nothing, nothing dark or malfeasant. You have so many wonderful words. Thank you. I like to, I like to show off my word collection on this podcast. But that's not what this podcast is about. <laughs> this podcast is about making friends out of magical creatures. And the magical creature we're going to talk about today is none other than the knuckle of V. Now, have you ever heard of knuckle of V's? Never, ever. Never heard where they're from? I mean, it sounds like a Celtic name. You are partially right. So the knuckle of V, or knuckle of V's, are creatures from the Orkney Islands, just north of Scotland. We just talked about friends from the Orkney Islands, the Selkies. Selkies, that's right. And... The Orkney Islands have a very distinct sort of culture because they've got a lot of influence from ancient Celtic people, modern Scottish people, the Norse, the British. All that kind of jumbles up. Quite a melting pot. Definitely. And they have their own mythology and it's called Orcadian mythology. Ooh. And the Nuklavi plays a very important role. Now let me tell you what the Nuklavi looks like. I know you took a look at a picture, right? Yeah, it... Uh... It was a little uh, sinister looking, to be honest. Yeah, not a not an outwardly friendly looking critter. The knuckle of E is very centaur like in its appearance. It has a horse body, and there is a human torso, arms, and head, but not where you think they'd be. You know, your typical centaur has a torso growing up out of the uh, horse neck, but with the knuckle of E, the torso goes straight up out of the back of the horse, and there's also a horse head still attached to the neck. So you got, it, it looks like someone riding a horse, but the Fused torso, together. Yeah. Now that sounds just a little redundant to me. I mean, two heads are better than one. Ah, touche. But let's, let's move on to a few more salient features of the knuckle of E. One is its skin. Which is to say, there isn't actually any skin on this creature. (laughs) It is uh, muscle and sinew on the outside. Mm. And it is covered in great big yellow veins that pump black blood through the body. Jeepers. Yeah, it's gnarly. Not a healthy looking creature, to be Mm. sure. But doesn't have to worry about sunburns. Okay. So that's a thing. That's something. So on to the heads. The human head is often described as being... About ten times larger than a typical human head. Whoa. Sort of like Megamind style. Yeah. And it lolls about the neck like a newborn baby. That's... While the horse rides. Yeah. (laughs) So this whole thing has been making me think of this this meme that we once saw about baby centaurs. And it was just floppy babies from the torso up. Oh, yes. Wobbling around on little horses. (laughs) Because... That may be the the only thought that can uh, bring you warmth about this creature's appearance. The torso itself is very rigid. The head just can't support its own weight. Hmm. And then the horse head only has one eye, and the eye is a red glowing burning eye. Uh, Sometimes in the center of the horse head, other times on like the right side only. Okay. So is this foreboding creature as severe as it comes off? Well, you know, that actually brings me to my next point. Both of the heads breathe out a very poisonous gas. Oh, no. And we'll talk about even more things that the knuckle of E gets up to here in a sec, but there's a few more things I want to talk about in regards to its appearance. Okay. The human arms are unnaturally gangly. Oftentimes they'll drag on the ground (laughs) while the the knuckle of E clomps about, which, (laughs) you know... If it were like a regular centaur that had that, it would be a little silly, but it it looks grotesque on the knuckle of E because they're sinewy, skinless arms with sharp nails. Yeah. 
Some people will also say that the Knuckle of E can take either full human or full horse form, though this is very rare. And even when it does do this, it's not a perfect facsimile as both the human form and the horse form will still be skinless. Right. So you still have a giveaway. Yeah. Oh, you can you can tell from afar. It's either, you know, you're looking at the the house Bolton flags or you got enough of the other hands. <laughs> Do you know why they don't have skin? I have a theory. I have a very interesting theory that is going to take most of this episode to build up to. Oh, okay. But that is something I want to talk about. The last thing about its appearance that I want to talk about is it's a water-dwelling creature. It dwells in the sea, and there is talk that the form it takes while in the sea is completely different from the form it takes while on land. Huh. But no one has ever seen what it looks like in the sea. So okay. it's anyone's guess. I like to imagine that it looks like Nessie. Aww. Kind of. But... That's that's about it for the appearance. The name, Knuckle is a modernization of the old Orcadian word Nogglevy, which translates to Devil of the Sea. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. So now, did you have any questions about the appearance before I move on to behavior? I guess less so about the appearance itself and more the creation or birth of one of these bad boys. Do they come into being as man and horse fused already or is it some magical process that binds them well orcadian legend would have you believe that the knuckle of you is always this way but my theory which i'm going to go into near the end poses a different idea okay so now i want to talk about the behavior there's no better way to present the knuckle of e than the fact that the people of the orkney islands consider it to be the most evil creature in the world gosh so it's good to keep that in mind, because... <laughs> <laughs> I'd say so. I I think I know what our rating is going to be later, but go on. It definitely makes it hard to find redeeming things about it, but sometimes that's the, the hand you're dealt. Most people in the Orkneys, especially back in the day, would fear to even speak its name, or if they did say the name of Knuckle of e, they'd whisper a prayer afterwards mm, Yes, in an effort to not summon it to their place. Huh. As I mentioned a little earlier, their breath is poisonous. As soon as they get on land, any plant life or livestock in the area will start to get sick and wilt. Oh, so someone has stolen the heart of Tefiti. Yeah, exactly like that. Only instead of the kind of crumbly volcanic fate that the people in Moana met, it's more like a mushy, wet, humid, rotty sort of fate, as you, you might expect from a cold, wet place like the Orkneys. Mm -hmm. In addition to this fun little thing they do, it is thought that they either cause drought whenever they emerge from the sea, or that they only emerge from the sea whenever there's a drought. Either way, if you see a knuckle of E, it is alongside a drought, mm -hmm. which is never a good thing. Also, in addition to breathing their poisonous breath, they will summon plagues that can wipe out entire villages. What is up their butt? Not a Shirakadama, I can tell you that. And despite this, despite how cruel and sinister this beast sounds, I could not find a single story where there was a knuckle of e laying hands on someone. Okay. It, it never struck anyone. It never wrote anyone down. There were a lot of talk about being chased by a knuckle of e, but mm -hmm. not what happens if the knuckle of e gets you. I think you're trying to outrun its breath and just the aura of disease around it. Right. So I'm guessing they don't only target humans since drought would affect wildlife as well. Yeah, they don't go out seeking people. They just come up on land and let whatever's around them die. It doesn't seem like they do this for fun. They don't seem to do it for sustenance. It never sounded like they later ate the dead sick things. It uh, didn't really seem like they got anything out of it. So it, despite the fact that it's called an evil creature, it doesn't seem like it's doing it out of malicious intent. How strange. Yeah, it's it's almost just like, this is the way it is. Hmm. But that's that's the sum of its behavior not a whole lot of detail on interactions with humans because most people would run yeah if they ever saw one i'd say so and i don't think most people who get close enough to a knuckle of e survive mm -hmm. that being said there are a certain number of ways that you can be protected from a knuckle of e the first most prevalent way is cross a body of fresh water whether it be a stream a lake a river 
the knuckle of E will not tread anywhere where fresh water is. Okay. Um, which is also why I think that it causes the droughts, so it doesn't have to worry about getting rained on. Huh, okay. Now, does that sound like anything that you've come across before in literature? That reminds me of the Nazgul. Yeah, actually, that's exactly what I thought of when I read about this. The Nazgul in the Lord of the Rings series would not cross bodies of fresh water. There's a very intense scene in the first movie where Frodo and the gang are running away from the Nazgul and they pass over a river. That being said, it doesn't seem like J.R.R. Tolkien necessarily was inspired by the Knuckle of E when it came to the Nazgul. Uh, he wrote about it being coincidental, and he didn't really have any idea why he made the Nazgul afraid of fresh water. That, that aside, interesting coincidence, though. No? Yeah, absolutely. So the other way that you can be protected from a knuckle of E, it's not really anything you do actively, but every summer in the Orkneys, a spirit called the Mither of the Sea, or the Sea Mither. The Mither! Yeah, the Mither. <laughs> she comes to the shores of the Orkney Islands, and she locks up the knuckle of E and prevents it from besetting the townsfolk and the livestock and the plants and the animals and everything. Oh, thank you, Mitha. But it can only last for so long because as autumn comes, so does her arch nemesis Terran, or Terran, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce the name. She will have to leave the knuckle of E to go do battle with him to prevent Terran from summoning storms. That's pretty epic. So you get protected from really bad storms, but also gotta deal with the knuckle of you. There's no winning. Nope. But life goes on in the Orkneys. <sighs> Another thing which is dubious at best is you can try to show the knuckle of you some respect. It's not what I would do, but if there's no fresh water around for miles, maybe you could just try bowing to it, saying a nice thing. That seems to be a theme with our friends. Yeah, a lot of friends like respect. I don't know if the Knuckle of E always cares. Yeah, it sounds like when they're barreling toward you, you wouldn't think twice to run. Mm -hmm. And the last one, I even hesitate to suggest this one because of the consequences, but <laughs> the Knuckle of E hates the smell of burning seaweed. Hmm. So if you dry out some seaweed and burn it, that kind of iodinic vapor that emerges will yeah. drive the knuckle of E away. Huh. But it will also make it so angry that when the smoke dies down, it will unleash the worst of its curses upon the land, uh, which is called the mortachine. And it is a wasting disease that affects horses, and it is known to wipe out an entire island's population of horses ah. in one go. There can be only one! can be only one mm -hmm. that was bad um <laughs> i liked it well meh. so yeah not a method that i would choose because i'd hate to see those horses get sick but yeah. it's it's a thing you can do if you need to keep them away if you can maybe keep a perpetual seaweed fire going mm -hmm. that might protect you yeah like a tire fire but yeah only seaweed slightly better smelling i can dig it so I've had a lot of things to say about the Knuckle of E, and pretty much all of them haven't been good things. It's been a terror of the Orkney Islands for about a thousand years. But what if it didn't come from the Orkneys? Where could it have come from otherwise? Well, here's the thing. Like I said, the legend of the Knuckle of E has only been around for about a thousand years. But there are legends of other creatures that go back even further that make me wonder if it didn't hitch a ride. The creature I refer to is the Nikul, which is a being from Iceland in the Faroes. Okay. This creature is described as a tall, beautiful gray horse. Very pristine specimen of a horse, but for all intents and purposes, a normal looking horse except for one feature. The hooves are backwards, which is kind of comical looking. <laughs> but if you ever see a horse with hooves on backwards while you're in Iceland or the Faroes, keep your distance. The Nikur, unlike the Knuckle of E, only seems to hang around fresh water. It'll graze or drink from a stream, that kind of thing, and look very calm and placid and friendly and invite you to come and pet its mane or try to jump on it. Give it a sugar cube. Give it a sugar cube. But as soon as you lay hands upon it, that's when the fun begins. See, its skin is very sticky sticky. Oh. And you will stick right to it and be unable to extricate yourself from it. 
and it will run right into that fresh body of water and drown yeah! you in it. We have a lot of friends of legend that scare me away from being near any body of water. Yeah, there are a lot of a lot of babies that seem to like baking a big old batch of drowny brownies. <laughs> Oh my, what a cutesy way of saying that. Uh, gotta gotta soften it up somehow. <laughs> so, obviously the solution is right there in the problem. You don't want to get drowned by a Nikur. You don't touch the Nikur. Don't touch it. If you can't resist, before it gets into the water, you can say its name. Or you can call it by its epithet, which is Vatneskrauti. Which means devil of the water. Coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally. Another sort of creature on a very similar vein is the Neck. The Neck lives in Denmark and Norway, and it also lives by bodies of water. The Neck most often takes the form of a beautiful horse, much like the Nikur, but unlike the Nikur, it can also take the form of a man, a fiddle-playing man. And it'll play a jaunty little tune on the fiddle and invite you to come to the stream to listen to it play, and as soon as you step foot in the water... It drowns you. You get got, yeah. Are there no kind horses? Um, not by bodies of water, from Dang. what it sounds like. All right. So you're noticing a similar theme here with the, the Nikur and the Neck and the Knuckle of E. They are all water associated. They're all kind of sinister. They all have similar names. They have very <laughs> similar names, but there are some distinct differences as well. The Nikur and the Neck live in fresh water. The Knuckle of E lives in salt water. The Nikur and the Neck seem to do this for sport, whereas the Knuckle of E does its things just because that's Compulsion. what it does. Mm-hmm. So here's my theory. Since the Knuckle of E was only referred to after the Orkney Islands were used as sort of a dropping off point for Vikings mm-hmm. on their way to England or France, what if in preparation for one of the raids, a Norseman from, I don't know, Iceland or Norway or the Faroes or wherever went looking for a horse, a good steed, to bring along with him. And he sees this tall gray beauty of a horse drinking from a stream. And the horse sees him. And the Nikur, or the Neck, decides, this is going to be my next prey. And the man uses apples or whatever and tries to lure the horse towards the boat. Mm -hmm. And against the Nikur, or the Neck's better judgment, it follows him. Finally, when they get near the boat, The man starts trying to put a bridle and saddle on him, and he gets stuck on the sticky, sticky flesh. And now this water horse is charging towards the nearest body of water it can find. However, instead of a freshwater body, it goes into the sea where the Uh, boat is. uh Now, as soon as the Nikur gets into the salt water, it starts transmuting the sticky adhesive on its skin. Ah. permanently binding the man to the horse. Dang, you're good. Now, in addition, the salty water is starting to dissolve the flesh off of both horse and man. Yeah. They're in excruciating agony. The man's head starts to swell and bloat, and this creature is filled with putrescence and misery and pain. Mm. And now you have something that's completely different. And when it emerges on land... It is skinless, it is bloated, has an angry eye, and it brings death and decay wherever it goes. You can write a dissertation on this. You have figured out. I never really found any confirmation on any of that. That was complete extrapolation. It's very plausible, though, yeah. But given that there were no sightings of the Knuckle of Ease prior to Viking settlement of the Orkneys, and the fact that uh, the Nikar and the Nekin, those are the actual plurals I, I misspoke earlier, were a part of Norse folklore far before that. It just makes sense to me that they became the Knuckle of E. Makes sense to me too. So now that I've presented my tinfoil hat theory on the origin (laughs) of the Knuckle of E, let's talk about how these creatures are represented in modern day. So I'm going to talk about all three, the Knuckle of E, the Nikur, and the Neck. First thing I want to talk about is that there is a lake in the Faroe Islands called Sörvogsvatn. And in the middle of this lake, there's a very large statue of a Nikur, Hmm. as well as a plaque on the edge of the lake warning people that 
there are Nikur in these waters and you have to be careful not to drown. That's interesting. Kind of like the how there were signs around bodies of water in Japan. The, for Kappa. the Kappa. Yeah. yeah. The other thing I wanted to mention was there was a show on NBC called Grimm. Oh, yeah. It was about kind of like bloodlines of mythical creatures that would hide in plain sight as humans. Hmm. And they had an episode about a Knuckle of E. Though it didn't really have very much in common with Knuckle of E lore. It looked like a vaguely skinless horse, but it manhandled people and it was very physically violent. Oh dear. Good for ratings, I guess. Mm -hmm. Next up is the SCP universe. SCP-3456, also known as the Orcadian Horseman, is just... Pound for pound, a knuckle of e. It is a tall, skinless horse with a man growing out of its back. Though it shares some Horsemen of the Apocalypse sort of lore about it, it'll only show up in places where there's war or natural disasters. Okay. And when in the SCP. It, in, the, in the SCP universe. Yeah. And when it does that, it will take people away. It doesn't say what's done with them when they're taken away, but they're taken away. Mm. Another thing that... I'm kind of extrapolating as well, but I couldn't not mention it because it's my favorite game. In uh, Bloodborne, in one of the DLCs, there's a boss you fight called Ludwig the Accursed. <laughs> That's a cool name. It is a very cool name for a very cool boss. He is a gargantuan amalgamation of horse hooves and man arms and he's got two heads mm. one very long grotesque horse-like head and then another sort of short stubby head that's covered in eyes oh gosh <laughs> um, oh, no. and he also spits a sort of poisonous gas ah. at you. i don't think that there was a direct pull from knuckle of e lore on this i just thought it was an interesting coincidence yeah absolutely it could very well have been inspired by knuckle of e's Definitely. Another one, another one that I really enjoyed when I learned about it, there's an old game called The Bard's Tale, where you play as an aspiring bard in, Aww. um, I can't remember if it was a made-up fantastical land or if it was actually the Orkney Islands, but this game has a lot of references to Orkney culture and mythology, and there's a song in it called The Knuckle of E, which is a very fun song, though not, strictly speaking, suitable for children. Okay. Um... I'd still recommend listening to it because it's very fun. <laughs> Lastly, I saved this one for last because I know it would mean a lot to my Claire. <laughs> there is a neck that plays a very major role in Frozen 2. Yes, I remember the water horse. Mm -hmm. Oh, so neat. So that one was less invite you into the water to drown you and more just trying to prevent her from getting whatever she was trying to get. I don't really remember. And then she also broke it like a wild stallion. That was sick. Mm -hmm. Man, I want to watch that again. We need to get Disney Plus again. Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about a lot of different things concerning these, these murder horses. <laughs> but can we become friends with them? Now, there wasn't anything I could find about ways to become friends with a Knuckle of E. Mm -hmm. But there also wasn't anything I found about people trying so I think that's kind of laziness on their part. I see. Here's what I think you can do. Start off with a stream between you two. You, you want to make sure that there's fresh water separating you and the knuckle of E so that you can work work your way into its good graces from safety. Mm -hmm. You can start by trying to show it respect, like I talked about earlier. Give it some compliments, a bow, you know. All the things that you, you would do to convey your reverence your your reverence for this very mystical and powerful being and if it hasn't walked away or found a way around the body of water that you're near start working from there maybe like wrap an apple in fresh seaweed and see if it likes that mm -hmm. throw it some sugar cubes that kind of thing see if it works i'm not very confident that it would but someone's got to try definitely right? just like just like everyone thought that Hiccup the Viking was crazy for trying to be friends with a dragon. And look where they are now. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll write a book about me called How to Train Your Knuckle of E. <laughs> I'll write it. Yay! <laughs> I hope I live to read it. <laughs> with the Nikur, or the neck, it's a little easier. Again, with the Nikur, all you have to do is not touch it. You can 
you know, feed it apples and sugar cubes, say nice things to it, just hang out and enjoy the bracing breeze of an Icelandic lake. I'm imagining this breeze in Iceland carrying along many beautiful leaves and they all stick to the the Nico. <laughs> well, the thing about uh, Iceland is it doesn't actually have that many trees, huh, yeah, but yeah. maybe bugs. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can be near it without triggering it. But that being said, sometimes they will give up the pretense and then just start trying to touch you so they can drag you in. Mm. And if that happens, just say Nikur or Vatnaskirati and you should be fine. But maybe don't go back after that. Sure. With the neck, it seems even more conducive to friendship. I read a lot of stories where the neck would play fiddle just so that people would come to listen to it, not necessarily just to drown it. Mm Mm-hmm. So if you hear fiddling coming from your your lakeside cabin in the heart of Norway, bring along a flute or a cello or a little drum and have a recital with it. I'm sure it would enjoy that. I'll bust out the old lakeside cello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everyone's got a lakeside cello. <laughs> that being said, sometimes uh, don't step into the water. Maybe stay on shore while you're playing. Mm-hmm. But think think the neck would enjoy a companion. I think so, too. So, with all that laid out before you, I think it's time to give these creatures a rating. Now, if you're not familiar with our rating system, we have a four-tiered system that judges how easy it is to become friends with one of these creatures. For your benefit. Yes, to to make it easy. Mm -hmm. Uh, The first tier is friend-shaped. It's exactly how it sounds. This creature was meant to be a friend. Like gnomes. Like gnomes. Gnomes are the best example. The second is cheeky friend. Maybe a little bit annoying. Not necessarily harmful, but think imps. Next up is Spicy Friend. You can become friends with them, but it is a risky business and you may get harmed in the process. Think something like the Tarisk. And lastly is Not a Friend Yet. We don't have record of this creature becoming friends with humans, so tread very carefully. Think the Kappa. So what would you rate these creatures? Well, I would probably rate it another not a friend yet because we don't have outright records of their companionship with us. And it sounds like most always they're in a bad mood. Yeah, I'd have to say that the Knuckle of E falls firmly in the not a friend yet status. But the Nikur and the Neck, I'd say that they're just like muy picante friends. I would have to agree, yeah. Because you can, you can be friends with them. You just kind of have to always be half on guard. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've been thinking a lot about whether we've been doing too many dangerous friends in a row, and that maybe we should sprinkle in some some happier little ones. But then I remembered the sweet little guys don't need as much help. They don't need as much, you know, good PR. It's true. Oftentimes, the only thing we're really doing for some of those little guys is making people aware of their existence. Yeah. They do the rest of the work, whereas these folk may have been maligned for centuries and right. need need an extra hand from a friendly Claire. Or a friendly Vince. Or a friendly Vince. Hmm. I want to thank you all so much for listening to another episode of our podcast. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave us a rating on whatever podcast service you use or even subscribe. It means a lot to us. It really does. And we post lots of fun things on our Facebook page and our Twitter page, So be sure to follow us there. And if you have any questions about the Friends of Legend that we've talked about, or if you have any suggestions for future episodes, or if you just want to say hi to us, then you can reach out to us at friendsoflegend at gmail.com. Additionally, if you want to learn more about the podcast, we've got a Frequently Asked Questions section and About Us page on friendsoflegend.com. You can also fill in a contact form there if you don't want to directly email us at the Gmail address. Lots and lots of ways to get in touch. And new episodes are up every Saturday, so keep an eye out for more friendly, legendary content. Again, thank you so much for listening. And remember, when it comes to Friends of Legend, charm them. Do not harm them. Mm